So, hello everyone, this is Akshay here and let us start with the today's GFG UTD speak of day 133. So, I guess you all are doing well and are doing fine. And I hope you, you, are, you guys are maintaining your streak as well. So, let us see what the today's question is all about and we'll see what are, what are all the different approaches that we can think and code of, right? Okay, so let's read the question. The question name is cutting rectangles. Is an, it is an easy category type of question and before starting it, uh, my laptop has fell down, right? So uh, half of the screen has been like uh, black to me. So that is why I am, uh, but luckily I have this extended monitor. So that is why I'm looking to right of my uh, screen and I explain the problem to you, right? <laughs> so just thought, just thought of telling you guys, we'll repair it ASAP because I'm also facing some difficulties while recording the video. Okay, so let us proceed on. So given a rectangle of dimensions L cross B, find the minimum number N of identical squares of maximum side okay so we need to find the identical squares which also has one constraint that it should be of maximum side possible that can be cut out from that rectangle so that no residue remains in the rectangle this question is easy here I easy like because the constraint is set in a manner that makes this question easy because you have to find the identical squares okay that was the one part you do not have to left any residue even right and you have to find the maximum side also. So one intuition is coming directly from reading this question, but let us see. Also find the dimension K of that square. Okay, so for L equals to two and four, they are saying that you can make two into two dimension squares, uh, which we have to take the quantity two, right? So that is why you can fill this two cross four rectangle. Similarly for six cross three, they are saying take the two squares of dimension three cross three, okay? Okay, okay, okay. And the constraint is given as 10 power 9. So definitely you cannot code in into O of L or O of B. You have to go much lesser than O of L or O of B. Let us let us discuss the constraint as well. So L and B. L and B both are pointing to greater than equals less than equals to 10 power 9, right? So you cannot code in O of L. That is not possible. Either you have to go log L right or you have to go log b because the standard uh, fan complexity just below o of n is log n right right even you can use root n as well root l also if there exists that solution okay so we have a rectangle like this right so let us say we have an arbitrary rectangle which has this this breadth as let's say what b length b length and let's say this, uh, let me mark it here. This length has L, right? I need to find such a square. So let us suppose that we have found a square with length X, let's say with length X. So that means this X should also be in this direction, in the vertical direction also, that only you can, it can make a, a square of X cross X because in square, all the lengths are equal, right? The another constraint was the first content constraint was square. The another constraint was no residue, no residue. The third constraint was that maximum possible side you have to find, right? Right. So let us assume if you have to leave no residue, no residue. That means if you have taken such x, then upon a particular number of repeating this x, it should point to this last. It should cover this b length, right? Similarly, in this direction also, it should it it have to cover. Then only I can say, maybe it takes it takes uh, maybe it takes just one step, and maybe it takes three steps in horizontal direction. But it has to cover, right? Then only I can say. Then the no residue constraint part will be satisfied. So that means, let us suppose that in horizontal direction, in horizontal direction, we repeated x k times, and let us suppose in the vertical direction we repeated x how many times? Uh, let's use a different variable let's say m times so what can i say i can say that x cross k will be equals to b lengthwise right and similarly for the vertical direction for the vertical direction i can say that x cross m will be equals to l right referring to these points i can say now that x will be a factor of b factor of b and referring from this point, I can say that X has to be also be a factor of factor of L, 
so that means x is such a number that have the common factors of l and b right so x has to be a number which has to be factor of l as well as factor of b so that is confirmed by using these two lines right if we consider if we look at the third constraint it is saying the maximum possible side now this x has to be the maximum possibility so x is a common factor you want the greatest so you can so you can say that it is nothing but greatest common factor right x is nothing but a greatest common factor which is also known as gcd so the overall overall question has been converted to find the gcd and we will good to go that what will be the dimension of my square right that would that is the first part of question that is that is the gcd of l and b will be pointing to this second output second part of k equals to 2 but how many squares are required how do we find that we know that if we have made this x squares then what will happen that if i repeat this x say let's say i'm just randomly drawing it right so let's say that i i have to place one square here two square here three square here four square here five and six square here right right let us suppose that i have covered everything leaving no uh, leaving uh, none of the residue right so what can i say that the number of squares will be nothing but the total area total area of l cross b divided by the area of each square right then i can find that how how many number of squares is required so it will be nothing but l cross b division of x cross x right this will be our first part of output this will be by first output this will be my second output and gcd has come multiple times in, in our pot street guys multiple times right so you must remember the gcd code the optimized euclidean euclidean code is the optimized euclidean algorithm this takes the complexity of o of minimum of a comma b that is minimum of length comma breadth and how it works let us let me explain you this last part that how the gcd is working let me write the pseudo code for you so the intuition for the euclid who has given this theory is that you have this let's say length a and b right now i am we are going off question we are discussing how the gcd has been calculated using the euclid algorithm okay so gcd say that let's say there is b and let's say there is a where b is smaller than a like a is greater right so it says that gcd of let's say a comma b will be equals to gcd of a minus b comma b you can verify it also let's say a and b is let's say 16 comma 4 right so the gc gcd will be equals to 16 minus 4 12 comma 4 it will be applicable for all the integers right and you can see also that you have just divided one instance of b from a so eventually the gcd will remain same right the optimized euclidean algorithm says is it uses the dividend it uses the remainder of divisor and the pseudo code goes like this so we have this function let's say int a comma b and the base case will be let's say b equals equals to zero then you have to return a else you have called the function you have to call the function again for we have to copy this thing here b right and then you have to do this thing a person b let us verify it for for a particular number and then we will proceed ahead so let's say you have to find the 10 comma 15 so what gonna do you have to copy this b number at the eighth position and then you have to find 10 percent 15 so it will be nothing but 10 right then you have to again copy this b at the eighth position it will be 10 and now you have to calculate 15 percent 10 so it will be 5 right then again you have to cal until and unless this b goes to 0 you have to do the steps again again so 5 will be copied here and then 10 percent 5 that gives us 0 so if b is equal to 0 return a so you can see that the gcd of 10 and 15 is nothing but 5 and that proves a euclid algorithm uh, we had a dry run also right so let us code this solution let us code this solution so since this question was very easy it's already been nine it's uh, just nine minutes so let us do the live coding so it will be long gcd of long so that's why i'm having this problem uh, my keyboard is just <laughs> here and i'm looking at my right to my extended screen because i cannot see my original screen okay so let's make a function long a and long b right i will code the exact pseudocode which i just explained to you so if b equals equals to zero 
we have to return a else what we have to do return uh, gcd of copy the b at the first position and then a percent b right i already showed you the pseudo code as well so i hope there is no uh, problem here so let's make a since the return type is a list and since this is a static reference then i have to make the function a static too because then it will throw error that you cannot reference a static method a non static method using the static main right so let us make a list here now let us make a list so i will say let's say al right and let's find that x part and let's name it at length so long length is nothing but gcd of what l comma b l comma b and let's find the number of squares as well so number of let's make a variable number of square it is nothing but the l total area divided by the square of x cross x it is basic basic mathematics here x cross x right now you have to return first of all the first output is regarding that how many squares you need right so i will say al dot add number of square right the second part of out output was the dimension of the square you use the maximum dimension right so i will say that al dot add length and at last i will say return length right now there are multiple ways to count this gcd right the only question the only intuition the only complexity regarding this problem is about the gcd you can either use um, min of a comma b also that will be your brute force right but uh, since we since we are studying data structures and algorithm we know there is one euclid algorithm as well so and that's the reason guys i think if you have coded this gcd function in o of n then that would have given you the time complexity error right okay so i think we are good to go and the overall time complexity remains same that these are all the things are o of 1 right only the time complexity involving in the gcd that is the log of minimum of a comma b and why is it so you can see that you can see that the number minimum uh, the in 10 comma 15 what is the minimum 10 so it is already getting swapped in the second iteration even if you even if you make your first entry as smaller it will be swapped to the second entry as the smaller and then you can see this 10 reduced to 5 reduced to 0 right and whenever you have the increment or decrement in terms of some such number then division or multiplication in terms of such number then always the time complexity is log and since the minimum number is increasing so that is why minimum of a comma b right i hope you are clear at this point let us compile and run and then we will submit this solution okay so i have used in x and in the explanation so unconsciously i have written x here as well so let us compile and run again okay so why i have written len <laughs> sometimes easy question can um, you feel so light that <laughs> you make some silly mistakes so i hope you are good to go now let's compile and again for the last time and we will submit the solution great let us submit the solution and since the time complexity is log of n of a comma b that is definitely less than 10 power 8 so it should get submitted let us wait for the results so great congratulations guys so we have done this question and it's an easy category question right so that's great i can see in my previous video uh only 410 views are there so i guess you guys were able to solve this problem although this was a hard problem and since we have covered the similar question in day 1 and 3 so i think you were able to solve it that's why this numbers are less so great uh, good for you good for us as well so let us meet in the putd streak of day 100 134 tomorrow and then so until then keep learning bye bye take care the last thing is that this is the c++ code the initiative i took uh, that the language should not be a barrier for any learner here so it is a c++ code here in the left hand side uh, just uh, if you want to make a list then you have to use a vector here and then in the add has the alternative of push back and that's all the things are same that you have to use long then the c++ you have to use long long so if you code in c++ you must be able to understand this code very well so let us meet tomorrow till then keep learning keep growing and take care bye bye